Welcome viewers to my YouTube channel. It's my sincere hope that you are keeping safe at home as we fight this epidemic of coronavirus. Together we are going to win and the Lord is on our side. So today I've sampled some 15 questions from different topics in KCP. So let us learn together, listen, watch and enjoy. Which one of the following is 2,035,800? So you analyze them, you start with 2,035,000, then not 800, means 8 over 100 in fraction form, and 0 0.08 in decimal form. So you add together all those numbers. What is the value of 2.8 minus 0 0.5 times 3.2 plus 3? all over 0 0.4 the first thing we are going to do is to work out the numerator and when we are working out the numerator we use board mass so we are going to start with the multiplication of 0 0.5 by 3.2 when you multiply 0 0.5 by 3.2 we get 1.6 then the next step still on the numerator we work out 2.8 minus 1.6 plus 3 not we are supposed to add 2.8 to 3, then we subtract 1.6. Don't make a mistake of saying 2.8 minus 1.6 plus 3, then you add 1.6 by 3. No, that would be wrong. It is 2.8, add 3, those are the two positive numbers, then you subtract 1.6. And this gives you 4.2 over 0.4. Then you multiply both sides by 10 to remove the decimal. You get 42 over 4, which gives you 10.5. The diagram beside represents a vegetable garden. One of its edges is a semicircle. Find its perimeter. Now, perimeter means the distance all the way around. So if I start, for example, at this point, I will have to add 54 plus half pi d plus that line plus 23 plus that line plus that line plus 20 plus that line up to where I started. I repeat, if I want to get perimeter and I'm starting at this point, I will have to add 54 plus half by D plus that line plus 23 plus that line plus that line plus 20 plus that other line there up to where I started. So we have to find all the lines which are not given and then we also we add them and then we add the half by D for this curve. So the first thing is to find the vertical lines which are not given. This vertical line here and this other vertical line here. So the two vertical lines which are not given, we shall get them through this vertical line of the diameter here, from here to here, which is 63, and this other one, which is 23. So these two vertical lines joined together form one long line up to the bottom. Same to these lines which are not given here vertical. This line joined with this one. If you bring this one here, it will form one long line from the top to the bottom. So the two vertical lines will be 63 plus 23, which is 86. For the horizontal lines, we shall do the same. We have this line which is not given, horizontal, and we have another horizontal line given. If we put together this horizontal line and the other horizontal line we are not given, they are going to be the same as these two horizontal lines given here. This one of 54 and this one of 20. So if you had 54 to 20, you get 74. So the two hidden lines, horizontal lines, is the same as 54 plus 20. So when you're looking for the horizontal line, you use the two horizontal lines given. When you're looking for the two vertical lines which are not given, you use the two vertical lines given. So for the horizontal line, the two added together, we get... 74 for the two vertical lines added together we get 86 now half by d for this curve here we say it is half times 22 over 7 times 63 which is 99 then we put together all those lines we start with the ones which were not given the vertical lines which were 86 meters plus 74 meters plus 20 meters 
plus 23 meters plus 54 meters plus 99 meters which gives us 356 meters so I repeat if I start here for example at this point here I had 99 I have idea I got 99 plus this line and this line which are not given here which is 74 then plus 23 plus this line and this line here which is 86 these two lines here which are vertical plus 20 plus 54 so when you put together all the lines which were given and which were not given plus the half by D you get 356 in this angle we are required to find angle QSR this angle I'm underlining here then uh, we have to start with the isosceles triangle we have an isosceles triangle which has 56 degrees here and then these are the two base angles this angle here and this angle here so we get 180 we subtract 56 180 we subtract 56 which gives us uh, 4 to 124 so we divide by 2 we get 62 62 so this is 62 here the base angle of this isosceles degrees and the two of this is 62 so we were told that line QS bisects PQR so this will be bisector divides an angle into two equal halves this will be 31 and the other one will be 31 it's to make up 62 both of them so now uh, we have to find this angle here so that we can use this triangle here to get the angle we want at S so we add 84 plus 62 we subtract from 180 because these are angles in a straight line these angles there so we get 84 we add 62 we get 1 146 we subtract from 180 angles in a straight line add up to 180 degrees angles in a straight line add up to 180 so we get 34 degrees so this angle here is 34 degrees now we remember our mission is to get this angle here in question mark so we are going to use this triangle here let me shade the triangle we shall use this triangle here is the one we shall use the whole of that triangle that triangle they have shaded so we shall use this angle plus the whole of this angle here subtract from one later to get this small angle here so we get 31 we add these two angles here 62 and 34 which gives us 96 plus 96 which gives us 127 we know angles in a straight uh, angles in a triangle add up to 180 so we get 180 we subtract 127 which gives us 53 so this angle here is 53 I think I can repeat again so for those who have not understood can you repeat again to some step so that you can understand fully because I know some of you have not fully understood it but it's good that they understand what I was doing so just going a few steps I start with that uh, we, we are looking at this angle QSR where the pencil is this is the angle we are looking for then we are going to start with the isosceles triangle here and in isosceles triangle we know the base angles are equal so that angle and this angle are equal this is the base angle and this is the base angle so we get 180 minus 56 first which gives us 124 124 we divide by 2 to get the base angles which is 62 so here it is 62 and the two of these angles here both of them the 62 so because this is a line bisector up there we were told this QS bisects this angle PQR so this will be 31 31 a bisector divides an angle into two equal halves so that the whole of it can be 62 so now because we want this angle here we are going to use this triangle here 
this triangle here the whole of this triangle is the one that will help us to get this angle so we must find this angle first and we know these angles in a straight line so to get this small angle here we get 62 we add 84 where we get 146 we subtract from 180 180 minus 146 where we get 34 this angle here is 34 so now we are going to use this triangle here the center one here to get this angle here angles in a triangle add up to 180 so if I can shade again the triangle that we are going to use is the whole of this triangle here and it measures that one here and this angle all of it here then we add this angle to this angle here we subtract from 180 to get the ang this remaining angle because this plus the whole of this angle plus this should total to 180 because it's a triangle so we add 31 to the total of 62 and 34 should be 96 we add 96 this gives us 127 then we get 127 we take away from 180 so 180 minus 127 which gives us 53 so this angle here is 53 so we were not using parallel lines there's nowhere where we were told that the lines are parallel we are just using the isosceles the angles in a straight line that is the supplementary angles and then the angles the, the interior angles of a triangle which add up to 180 I think you have understood the diagram below represents a wedge what is its total surface area in square centimeters to get the surface area we know we are supposed to get the area of each shape and then we put together all those areas to get the total surface area so looking at this figure we have two triangles which are the which act as the base we have this triangle at this end and the other triangle at the other end there so we first get the area of the two triangles and area of a triangle is half base times height so it is half times eight times six the base is eight the height is six then we multiply by two because there are two triangles which gives us 48 square centimeters then looking after the triangles we have three rectangles we have the, the the front one which measures 12 and a line we don't know here so to get this line we don't know here we are supposed to use the Pythagorean theorem which says when you square this short line here 6 squared plus 8 squared will give us the hypotenuse squared so 6 squared which is 36 plus 8 squared which is 64 gives us a hundred and then you find the square root of a hundred which is 10 so the line we are not given here is 10 we can also use the right angle triangle we know it's uh, by the name 3 4 5 then we say 3 was multiplied by 2 to give us 6 8, 4 was multiplied by 2 to give us 8 then 5 will be multiplied by 2 to give us 10 so we have known this line is 10 so we start with this rectangle which measures 12 by 10 and which is 120 square centimeters we have the bottom rectangle at the base here where the, the, the figure is seated, seated on it measures 12 by 8 so we multiply 12 by 8 which gives us 96 square centimeters then we have the back rectangle which measures 12 by 6 which gives us 72 square centimeters then we find what we call total surface area area of all those shapes we start with the 120 for this rectangle 96 for the bottom rectangle 72 for the rectangle at the back and 48 for the two triangles which gives us 336 there's also a me another method that i'll use to show you how to get the area in method two of getting area of the same figure we are supposed to open up this wedge and when we open up the wedge to form the net we discover that it is made up of three rectangles this is the first rectangle the second rectangle and the third rectangle and then on the sides we have the triangles so this is the net of the same figure then you discover that um, I've written in the formula that we get the perimeter of the triangle we are getting the perimeter of the triangle because the perimeter of the triangle is made up of six 
8 and 10 and when you stretch this figure to open up it becomes a one big rectangle which is 6 8 and 10 that becomes the longer side of the rectangle and then this side here becomes now like the width becomes 12 so we get the area of the whole of this rectangle after adding 6 plus 8 plus 10 which becomes 24 so after getting the perimeter of the triangle which is 6 plus 8 plus 10 it was 6 plus 8 plus 10 that becomes now the length of that long rectangle there the three rectangles put together it becomes 24 then you multiply by 12 times the length there you get 288 then the other thing that you'll need to do is to add these two triangles and the two triangles you put them together to form one rectangle because two triangles put together they form a rectangle so you just say base times height and the base was six the height was the base was eight the height was six so you just multiply six by eight because the two of them make a rectangle when joined together so i repeat again when you open up this figure here it forms a one big rectangle and the length of that rectangle will be the perimeter of the triangle so you add 6 plus 8 plus 10 6 plus 8 plus 10 that gives now the long side of the rectangle then multiplied by this length here 12 so 24 times 12 which gives us 288 and then the only thing now you have not added are the two triangles so the two triangles you combine them together to form one short small rectangle you just say base times height 6 times 8 which gives us 48 so when you add 288 you get 336 but if you find this one is a bit tricky for you use the other method which is very okay because you are dividing the shape into the shapes that you can understand easily A rectangular container is 2 meters long, 0 0.9 meters wide, and 2.5 meters high. The container has water to a height of 1.5 meters. How much more water is needed to fill the container? So the key word here is how much more water is needed to fill. We are concerned with how much water is needed to fill. So I've analyzed the question here uh, like this, where we have the full height of the container is 2.5 meters the length is 2 meters the width is 0 0.9 meters then i've shown that the white part here is where the water is up to the water is up to 1.5 meters so if water is up to 1.5 meters and the full height is 2.5 meters it means the height of the empty space is 1 meter and remember we want the height of the uh, the empty space the one without water so what will change here is only the height so i'm going to find the volume of this space here which doesn't have water because we asked how much is needed to fill so the volume of the empty space which doesn't have water is what we are concerned with the length remains to be two meters doesn't change you can see the length here and the length here the same the width remains to be 0 0.9 meters there but the height of the space which is needed to fill becomes one i got 2.5 which is the full height minus the height of the water 2.5 minus 1.5 i got one meter so we need a height of one meter so i multiply two meters by 0 0.9 meters by one meter and this will give me the answer straight of the empty space without water that is the, the the one which is needed to fill so i get two meters times 0 0.9 times one this is the volume now we change the volume into capacity one cubic meter is equivalent to a thousand liters so if one cubic meter is equivalent to one cubic uh, 1000 liters what about 1.8 cubic meters we multiply 1.8 times a thousand and then we get 1800 liters that is the water which was needed to fill so in this method you are not going to subtract anything just getting the answer straight and how did i get it i just got the the the, the, the height of the empty space without water which is one meter i got by subtracting the full height which is 2.5 minus the height of water 1.5 i got the the height needed to fill the tank is one meter so the length doesn't change we multiply two meters by 0 0.9 by now one meter
because we want the space which is needed to fill so we get 2 times 0 0.9 times 1 Juma paid 11,900 shillings for a bicycle after getting a discount of 15%. How much more would he have be paid if he had been given a discount of 10%? Now, this question we analyze by saying that what he paid, which is 11,900, in terms of percentage, that should be 85%. Because what he paid was after a discount of 15%. So... The, what he paid is 85%. You get original 100%. You take away 15%. You get 85% is what he paid. What he paid is the buying price. Take note of that. So this 85% represents 11,900. The price after discount. Then how much more would he have paid if he had been given a discount of 10%? If the discount was 10%, then he would have paid 90% because he would have been relieved 10% from the original price, marked the price 100%. So in this question, we want to know how much more, underline the word more. So we ask ourselves, by paying 11,900, which is 85%, if 85% is the same as 11,900, what about 5%? 5% is, is the difference between what he paid in terms of percentage, 85%, and what he would have paid, which was 90%. And the difference between what he would have paid and what he paid is 90% minus 85%, which is 5%. Because with a discount of 15%, he would have paid 85%. We subtract 100 minus 15. With a discount of 10%, he would have paid 90%. So how much more is 85% more than 90%? It's 5% more when you subtract. So then you ask yourself, if what he paid 85% was represented by 11,900, what about 5%? Then you cross multiply where you get 700. The diagram below is a trapezium. M N P Q. Line M Q is parallel to line N P. The length of line M Q is 8 cm and that of line N R is 7 cm. The perpendicular line M R is 12. If the area of the trapezium is 198 square centimeters, what is the length of R P from here to here? So in this question, we have to use the formula area of a trapezium, which is equal to half into bracket sum of parallel lines A and B times height. So we substitute what we are given. We are given the area, which is 198 square centimeters, equals to half into brackets. One of the parallel lines is 8. We don't know the full, the other full parallel line. We only know part of it, so we just call it B. Because the other parallel line is supposed to be from N to P, not R to P. The full of from N to P. So we only know one of the parallel lines. So let's use letter B to represent the other parallel line. Then this half can multiply with 12, which is outside the bracket. We get by half, by 2, 1, by 2, 6. So we now get in the second step, the area 198 equals to, into brackets, 8 plus B times 6. Take note. This 6 multiplies whatever is in the bracket. You must multiply 8 times 6 to get 48 and 6 times B to get 6B. Don't just multiply one number with the, in the bracket. So 198 represents 48 plus 6B. We know we are supposed to take 48 on the other side so that we remain with 6B. And 6B becomes 198 minus 48. So 6B is 150. So when we solve that, we get B equals to 25. And remember, B is from N to P, the whole of the parallel line. And the examiner specifically wants R to P. So because N to P is 25, to get R P, we take that 25, the full length, we subtract this 7 we are given here, so that we remain with R P, which is 18 centimeters. The cash price of a radio is 8,000. The higher purchase price is 50% more than the cash price. 
Amina bought the radio on higher purchase by paying a deposit of 2,400 and equal monthly installments of 800. In how many months did she pay the installments? So the cash price stands here as the original price 100%, which is 8,000. Higher purchase was 50% more, meaning it was 100% plus 50. So it was 150%. So with these two prices, we can now be able to tell what was the higher purchase price by asking ourselves if the original price, which is the cash price, was 100%, which is 8,000, what about 150%? Then we cross multiply and get 12,000 was the higher purchase price. I repeat, because the cash price in this case is the original 100% and the higher purchase was 50% more. So the higher purchase was 150% because it was more than the cash price, which is the original. So we ask ourselves if the original cash price, which is 100%, is 8,000. What about 150%? Then we get the higher purchase was 12,000. So now it becomes very easy because we know higher purchase is made up of deposit plus total monthly installments. So we get the higher purchase, we substitute the formula higher purchase, which is 12,000, is made up of, is equal to deposit of 2,400 plus uh, the other installments, which were 800 times M. M represents the number of months because we don't know for how many months. So the only thing now to do here is to get the deposit subtracted from the higher purchase price. So we get the 12,000, which is the higher purchase price. We subtract the deposit then that 9600 we get we divide by what he was paying each month each month he was paying 800 so you divide and get 12 months I just repeat again here you start by comparing the cash price with the higher purchase because the cash price in this case becomes the original 100 percent which is 8000 then the higher purchase is 50 percent more meaning it's 150 you ask yourself if 100 percent is 8,000, what about 150 percent? You get the higher purchase was 12,000. The next thing to do is to take away the deposit from the higher purchase. So when you take away the deposit from the higher purchase, which is 12,000 minus 2,400, what you are left with is the total monthly installment of 9,600. Remember, this was he was paying 800 every month. So if you want to know what he was paying each month, divide the total monthly installment of 9,600 by 800, what he was paying each month, and you get he paid for 12 months. How many cubes are needed to fill the stack below? This is the stack. Then uh, to get the number of cubes which are needed to fill, we first have to count the cubes which are already in the stack. And then the other thing to do after that is to count when it is full. How many is it supposed to carry when it is full? Then we subtract the bricks which are there from the ones it's supposed to carry when it is full. And that will give us how many are needed to fill the stack. So starting with how many are in the this stack, we count them in layers from the bottom layer. The bottom layer, if we count from the bottom layer from where you can see the cursor of the mouse is... Those are four bricks up to the end. If you count from here going up to the farthest end, we can't see those are four. When we come here, those are three up to the other to the end there. Those are seven. Then those are two. Then this is one. So four plus three plus two plus one, which is ten. When you come to this layer here, we have three, two, one. These are 3, 2, 1. That is 5 plus 1, 6. So, so far is 16. Then we come to this one. 1, 2, then 3. Those are 3. Then the top one, 1. I start again from the bottom layer. These are 4. This line has 4 up to the corner. This has 3. This has 2. This has 1. So, 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7 plus 3, which is 10. Then the upper one here. These are 3 up to the end, 2, 1. So that makes 6, that is 16 up to there. Then plus these 3 which are here, that makes it 19. Then the top one, 20. So in the stack we have 20. And then when it is full, how many is it supposed to carry? 
it's supposed to carry for example the layers we have seen the layers are four going up one two three four so it's supposed to have four layers that's where i've written four there columns if we count from here to the end it's supposed to carry also four in terms of that line four columns and the rows it's also supposed to carry four rows so it's supposed to carry four by four and going up the layers four so four times four sixteen times four sixty four so when it is full it's supposed to carry sixty four so to know how many are needed to fill we take when it is full it's supposed to have sixty four it's carrying twenty so it's lacking forty four forty four are needed to fill Using a pair of compasses and a ruler, construct a triangle UVW such that lines VW is 7 cm, UV is 8 cm, and UW is 6 cm. Draw a circle which passes through UV and W. So this is a circle that is touching the points, the vertices. So it's a circle passing outside. So we are going to bisect two lines after we draw the triangle so the first thing is to draw the triangle we draw the triangle together so we get a ruler we start with one of the lines the first line we are given the first line we are given is seven centimeters so we draw our line of seven centimeters From zero mark, we need a line of seven centimeters, like that one there. Exactly seven. We mark this point V and this one point W. Then we note that it is seven centimeters. Then after that, we have uv which is eight centimeters u is somewhere up here and v is here so from u to v will be eight centimeters so we take our compass and our ruler we measure eight centimeters measure eight centimeters to represent uv so we measure eight centimeters there we are then standing at point v Remember, we want UV, which is 8 centimeters. We know that V U will be somewhere up here. So I make a big arc to represent where U will be, which is 8 centimeters. From U to V, we know it's 8 centimeters. Then the other line we are given is VW. Is UW is 6 centimeters. From W to U, where U will be, it will be 6 centimeters. I get my ruler again. I measure 6 centimeters. I measure six centimeters to represent UW. So having my six centimeters, I come here and then I make a knack that is going to cut the other arc. Having a radius of six centimeters, we cut like that. So eight centimeters and six centimeters meet there and that becomes our point u is our point u so what remains is to join these points now to complete the triangle with a ruler join properly join properly very accurately so we have completed the triangle now we bisect any two lines i'm going to bisect vw and vu uv so i start with vw Remember to bisect a line. To bisect a line, you need to stretch your compass. This is the line I'm bisect bisecting. You need to stretch your compass to be a radius of more than a half. A half is like somewhere here. So more than a half, this is a good radius of the line VW. So after having that radius, I move up here, standing at W. I make a big arc like that. Then still standing at W, I come down here, I make another arc with the same radius. I make an arc there. Then I come to the other end of the line. This end of the line. I turn the compass. 
come to this other end of the line then with the same radius I cut that arc then I go down I go down I go down here I cut the other arc like that with the same radius that I was using don't change the size of the, the compass so now I join this point and this point with a ruler I join I join from here down to here you use a ruler so if you look at this line is it well bisected yes because it has been cut into two equal halves and the bisector is passing through 90 degrees so it's a perpendicular bisector now we come to bisect this line we can bisect uw or vw vu so we can choose to bisect uw this line here so to bisect this line here we are supposed to stand at this end check whether the compass is having a radius which is more than a half you can reduce it it should be more than a half half is up to somewhere there then I make a knock on this side of the line remember you're supposed to make a knock on one side and a knock on the other side of the line so we have made a knock there we also make a knock on this side with the same radius make a knock there then the, the UW we come to the other end of the line which is W here we cut a knock that will cut now the first arc we made then we come to the other end here we cut with the same radius we cut an arc like that then we remove the compass and we join these arcs of in points of intersection with a ruler you get a ruler and then you join this point with this point properly so the two bisectors look at this bisector it's, this line has been well bisected cutting at 90 and divided into two equal halves so the first bisector met the second bisector here so the two bisectors are meeting here so this becomes the center of our circle so this being the center of our circle we stretch the compass to touch point V one of the points then we try whether it can touch the other point before we draw yes it's touching and we try the other point whether it's touching it's touching then we draw now the circle we draw the circle wow so nice so after drawing the circle now we need to know the question is asking the question is asking uh, what is the length of the radius of the circle remember the radius is from the center where we were standing to the circumference so you can join a line from the center to the circumference this is our radius that's our radius so we can have our ruler here then using your divider if you have your divider or your compass you now take this radius measure this radius measure this radius properly and then you see how many centimeters it is it's giving 4.2 and that is choice c exactly 4.2 which is our radius so they always give an allowance of plus minus 0 0.1 so you cannot have another answer very close to 4.2 the nearest is 3.9 so you need to be accurate because if you are not accurate you might get something closer to 3.9 which can confuse you so our answer is 4.2 three pupils furaha gitahi and komen contributed a total of 400 shillings for a party furaha contributed 30 more than gitahi while Komen contributed three times as much as Furaha, if Komen contributed X shillings, which of the following equations can be used to find Komen's contribution? So we just first analyze what we are given. Furaha in short form. Furaha contributed that more than Gitahi. Then Gitahi, we have not been told a lot about him. Komen contributed three times as much as Furaha. And then men again contributed x which is and then the total was 400 so we go straight to common who we are given as our clue that is x common contributed x 
And then we are told that Furaha contributed, not Furaha, Komen contributed three times as much as Furaha. So Komen is the one who contributed more compared to Furaha. And he contributed three times more than Furaha. So don't make a mistake of saying Furaha is 3x. Because when you, the statement says Komen is the one who contributed three times as much as Furaha. So Furaha will be a third x or what Komen contributed divided by three. Because it's Komen who contributed three times and Komen is x. So Furaha is a third x or x over three. Because Komen is the one who contributed three times more than Furaha. Then going, going ahead, we are told that Furaha, the first statement, Furaha contributed 30 more than Gitahi. Again in this statement, it is Furaha who has contributed more than Gitahi. So Gitahi must be less by 30. So we take the amount for Furaha, we subtract 30. Because Furaha is the one who contributed 30 more than Gitahi. So Gitai will be a third, the value of Furaha, which you have got a third x, then we take away 30. So we now have the three values. Furaha is a third x, Gitahi is a third x minus 30, then Komen is x, and the total is 400. So we form an equation saying a third x, that is Furaha, plus a third x minus 30, that is Gitahi, plus x, that is Komen, gives 400. Now, we uh, in this question, we are supposed now to put brackets so that we can remove these denominators. So what you are going to do is, where there is a third x, we put brackets. Then where there is a third x minus 30, we say all this over 1 because it's just a number without a denominator. And then x, we also put it over 1. And then 400, we also put it over 1 so that uh, we can remove these denominators, these fractions. So we go multiplying everything by the LCM. The first bracket, a third x times 3. 3 cancels with the top 3 here and we get x. A third x minus 30, again multiplied by the LCM, 3. A third x, 3 will cancel with this 3, we are left with the x. Then the 30 multiplies with 3 to give us 90. Then x over 1 times 3 gives us 3x. Then we also multiplying the answer by 3, by the LCM. 400 over 1 times 3 gives us 1200. So when you collect the like terms together, we get x plus x plus 3x, that is 5x, minus 90 equals to 1200. So, I'm just repeating again number 12, the part for forming the equation. We have uh, a third x, which is one person, plus a third x minus 30, the other person, plus x, which is the other person command, equals to 400. We put brackets for each person, and then we put the ones without a denominator, we put over 1. So we have the first person, which is a brackets, a third x, we multiply by the LCM of the denominators. The denominators are 3, 1, 1. So and the, the LCM of 3, 1, 1 is just 3. So we go multiplying everything by that LCM. So a third x times 3 gives us x. Because the 3 will cancel with the other 3. A third x minus 30 times 3. The first a third x cancels with the 3. We are left with x. Then 30 we multiply by 3. We get 90 here. Then when you come to x over 1 times 3 it gives us 3x because there is nothing that will cancel out then the answer 400 over 1 we multiply 400 by 3 we get 1200 here we collect the like terms x plus x plus 3x which gives us 5x minus 90 equals to 1200 and I think we need more practice on that and I will bring more in my YouTube channel 
Adhiambo left home and cycled for one and a half hours at an average speed of 8 km per hour. She rested for 30 minutes and continued with her journey for two hours at an average speed of 7.5 km per hour. What was the average speed for the whole journey? So when you are getting average speed, we need to know that we have to get the total distance traveled and the total time taken, then we divide the two. We break the journey into two. Any journey that involves a place where there was a rest, you break it into two. Let's get the details of part one before uh, uh, up to the time he had a rest. So we are told he left home and cycled for one and a half hours. That is time. Time was one and a half hours. Speed was eight kilometers per hour. Given time and speed, we can get distance because distance is speed times time. So the two uh, values we are given time and speed will help us to get distance. So we get one and a half times eight, which is the same as three over two times eight, which is 12 kilometers. So now we have known the distance he was covering. Then the rest was for 30 minutes have an hour rest will be included when you are working out average speed don't forget that then after the rest is what we call part two of the journey he continued with the journey for two hours that is time at a speed of seven and a half kilometers per hour that is speed so the remaining distance we can get it by multiplying this time and this speed so speed times time we get two hours times seven of and a half change to improper becomes 15 over two so this gives us 15 kilometers so the second part of the journey at a time of two hours and speed of seven and a half kilometers per hour he covered a distance of 15 kilometers now we have everything we need to calculate the average speed we get the total distance divided by the total time the total distance is the first distance which was 12 kilometers plus the second distance which was 15 kilometers then the total time, we start from the top, there was one and a half hours started with, there was a rest of half an hour, which I've put here, and then part two, he took two hours. So we must add all the time he took. The first time was one and a half, the second time was a rest of half an hour, then the other time was two hours. So one and a half plus half, which is two, two plus two is four. So we get the total distance was 27 kilometers divided by four hours which gives us six and three quarter kilometers per hour. So in the first part, we were not given distance. We had to find distance by multiplying speed times time. The second part, we were also not given distance. We had to multiply speed times time. So to get the total distance, which is 12 plus 15. Then for the time, we have to include every time, even the rest, one and a half hours, the rest of the half an hour and the other time for two hours which gives us a total of four hours a sales girl earns a salary of 1000 per month she's also paid a commission of three percent for the sale of goods above 10,000 in one month she sold items worth 68,500 how much money did she earn that month uh, we are given the basic salary is 1000 then the commission is 3% for goods above 10,000. So we get the total sales that he sold all together. He sold goods worth 68,500. Then we take away 10,000 to get the ones which were above. So this gives us 58,500. These are the ones to one commission. Not everything that has been sold will earn commission. It is only the goods which are above 10,000. So when we subtract the total sales minus 10,000, we get the goods above where 58,500. Then from these goods, he'll get a commission of 3%. So what is 3% of 58,500? It is 1,000. 755 that is the commission three percent of goods above so we have taken the total sales minus the goods ten thousand to get the goods above then we multiply by three percent to get the commission was one thousand seven hundred and fifty five then to get the total earning earning is given by basic salary plus commission so we get the salary which was one thousand up here plus the commission which you have got 1755 we get 2755 i've also posted another clip explaining how to get the total earning in my earlier clips so you can watch out also 
The graph below shows a motorist's journey from town M to town N at Beck. What was the motorist's average speed for the whole journey? So average speed as we have seen earlier, it's given by total distance divided by total time taken including the rest. So in such a question, we have to check the distance that he covered going to where he was heading to from town M to N and back again from town N to M. So if it's a return journey, the journey where you go and you go back is called return journey. You have to be careful. So starting from M, follow that cursor. There's a rest there. Then it goes up to the top N where it covered 300 kilometers. That is only a single way from M to N. Then this other straight line shows the return journey when he was going back to M. That's another 300 kilometers. So the total distance he covered was the 300, the one he went up to the top from M to N, and then again from N to M, another 300. So the total distance covered was 600, 300 kilometers from M to N, and then from N to M, another 300 kilometers. So the total distance was 600 kilometers. Then the total time will be given from 7 a.m. up to 1 p.m. We count the intervals from 7 to 8, 1 hour. From 8 to 9, 2 hours. From 9 to 10, 3 hours. From 10 to 11, 4 hours. From 11 to 12, 5 hours. Then from 12 to 1, 6 hours. So we divide 600 kilometers by six hours distance total distance divided by total time to get 100 please candidates not when it's a return journey remember you get the distance where you went from L m to n which is 300 and then you add another 300 for the journey was traveling back to m so it is 300 plus 300 those candidates who are not keen will just use 300 divided by 6 and get one of the answers which are there. That is choice D. So be careful. It is 300 from M to N, which you can see 300 there. Then going back N to M, another 300. So the total distance is 600 kilometers. And total time is from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. where you count the intervals and you get 6 hours. Then you divide, you get 100 kilometers per hour. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.